steampunk wood stove. First fire of the day. This is about six o'clock in the morning. I've got to heat the chimney up to get the airflow to go out. Uh, it was cold last night, so over the course of time, the cold air falling down the chimney, and I've got to change the flow to make it go out instead of in. So I've got to heat the chimney up, and I've got to also, I've also had to open the door of the house to let air in so the pressure change will actually work. So I heat it up a little bit, then I can chunk some wood in the door, but I've got to practice uh, first thing in the morning. This is what we do to make it work. That first fire of the day, I'll make it hot to clean out the chimney. That's any creosote that's built up in the chimney the day before. I can burn that out in the morning when I'll be right nearby and get it hot enough so that it uh, cleans that creosote out. Now you see the little kindling I'm throwing in there? I'm throwing a little bit extra so it will burn off the top of the pile and get a little extra hot and um, that that fire, that hot hotness will be a little extra hot just for a short period of time enough to clean that chimney out and burn any of the accumulated Prius foot from having a slower burning fire. Now you see me Move back there and I got to heat the chimney up again because the cold was falling down instead of going up <laughs> and a little bit of smoke come out the door and then I got to push it out again and the air pressure is not always like that but the air pressure outside you've got to overcome that and the, the weight of the cold air but now it's transitioned and now pay attention to the smoke okay all that smoke is unburned wood gas, unburned carbon, and it's going to want to collect on the pipe, the chimney on the inside of the pipe. Why it's necessary to keep that pipe clean so there is no chimney fire of accumulated creosote. See this, see this smoke? See, now it's going pretty good. It's got enough draft now to pull it out. See, gathering up at the top and it's moving its way through, but that'll make a nice hot fire. Now everything else around the chimney right now is pretty cool. The wood stuff around it, so there's no, basically no chance of having anything go sideways. But it's going to be toasty in a minute. Like this is, uh, like I say, this is like six o'clock in the morning. So, yes, I've gotten faster at this as time's gone by. It used to take me longer to stack up a pallet of wood, but uh, I'm getting pretty quick about it now. But this is the worst wood, basically, you can possibly burn. Because if I can make it work with the worst, then I'll surely be able to make it work with the better. Dry oak would be really nice, but this pine, this is slab pine wood from last year's... Um, sawmill stuff and I never did get it covered it is a lot of it is sodden wet so <laughs> this is really close to bringing in like fresh cut it is so wet uh, I didn't get it covered it had snow on top and even though this is this is in the middle of February um, there's no snow anywhere uh, kind of weird but so I'm going to bring in a pallet of wet wood, but we're going to get that split inside the house, actually. I'm going to split it inside, and this, I'm just showing you what I'm doing, what we've had to do to make this system work. So that we know, you know, if we were to lose electricity, if we were to lose gas, if stuff was to go really sideways, our backup system would actually function in the worst of conditions. So we're testing it with really wet wood and I have some dry wood stored that will help us make this work. Now this pallet right here, this is extremely dry. This is white pine, burns really hot. 
and it is bone dry. I've had it stored inside. And it was left from, what was it? It was going to be chair backs is what it was going to be. But, uh, things have changed. And uh, now it's going in for all the world. It's going in for firewood, but it's really dry and it will help um, hmm, heat up the room enough. You know, the pallet I brought over that it was just stacked up, that's going to be going in right away too. But we're going to use the heat from this dry wood to dry down the wet wood so it will be dry enough to burn. You know, it's split fairly well split. It uh, slabs off the sawmill. So it's fairly small pieces and we'll split them a little smaller and stack them inside. But we'll use this dry wood to heat the other. Now one pallet of wood, like I just loaded up, one pallet, one full pallet, is good for about a uh, week and a half to two weeks. But all the things we had to do to make it work, all the systems that got to be in place. Now you see me working off of these pallets. They, they're pretty easy to move around with the tractor and stuff. Uh, the first winter that we did this, I pulled everything over in a sled. Uh, one trip at a time. And uh, that got old. So this is our second winter burning like this. And we shut the natural gas off. We've got natural gas, in-floor heat. The system works great. I really love it. It's a fantastic system. But we wanted to perfect this, uh, to perfect it in case we really needed it to function. Uh, I didn't want to be thrown into the mix and just one, you know, one fell swoop of figure all this stuff out. So we're doing it when there is no pressure. We could always turn the in-floor heat on if we wanted to right now, but um, we haven't. It's been off. This has been our only heat now for 16 months. Now, to this chimney, I had to add, uh, you see that skanky looking piece of galvanized steel? The drip line at the roof added this in to keep that uh, insulation dry. And then in the summertime, I just put a canvas over the top. And we did change this sheet of aluminum here and went to, um, what is it, uh, 3 16 of an inch thick, one sheet. That's probably, that one sheet of aluminum, this thing right here, this sheet of aluminum cost more than all the rest of the stuff I had to buy for this thing. But... The other, uh, the initial piece that I put in, it had, was a plastic uh, inside and aluminum on each side, and it was causing problems. It was distorting. So, replace that with this to make it uh, foolproof. It was like 350 bucks for that sheet of aluminum. Well, the two pieces I put one inside, added inside, and then outside. But the fiberglass wrapped around the outside, that's working great. Um, now that turnbuckle up at the top, that turnbuckle puts a lot of pressure pushing in on the wood stove. And that thing started to slowly slide across the floor, uh, moving in. So we added the turnbuckle inside to counteract the weight of the chimney outside. And as a precautionary measure, we hung, this is our fire hose right there. We hung a fire hose in the pantry and uh, it's connected, or this is right where the water line comes into the house. And we can take, if we needed to, we could pitch that fire hose right out the window and the chimney is right outside there. Or it will reach into here if we need it. But now here you see the rank of firewood. This is the wet wood that we brought in and split inside the house here and stacked up and we got fans blown on it to dry. Here you see that the turnbuckle we added at the floor and bolted to the wall because that the weight of the chimney the way I got it tied there it was causing the uh, the stove um, per week it would move about a quarter of an inch across the floor and just and I had to pull it back 
and the, that um, two sheets of aluminum inside, they are held in place. They're held up into that space. The only thing holding it there is that little bracket that's uh, shot into the chimney. And you see that little cleat there up against uh, um, the sheets of aluminum to hold it in place. And keeping an air wash around everything, the airflow. And our uh, gravity powered wood splitter is uh, held in place on it by that one little pivot point bolt you see right there in the back. So it can swivel back and forth, but it's only got one bolt that holds it um, in place while we're using it. And usually it's the two of us, camera girl and I, that uh, work that. But now this has become my favorite room in the house, this steampunk coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, no place like home.